In this part, we solve the case of Madame Dupre. I do make my first mistake, but I find a creative way to solve this. Officially, this would maybe count as cheating, but you're not gonna rat me out, are you? Welcome back. So, you told me that my mic volume was a bit too soft, so I changed a couple of settings. Uh, I changed the sound of the game, put it down a bit more, and I also made sure that the volume of my mic is louder than the game is. So please let me know if this is better or not, or especially if it's not, <laughs> then I'll fiddle around until I get it right. Um, I don't really remember what we were doing, but I did see when I watched my previous parts, because I sometimes do that, I check them out, that I missed something. So I want to check that out at the desk um, of, was it the sister's room? I thought I could do something with the drawers and I did not do that. So I want to make sure that I did not miss something. Because I feel like with this game, if you miss one thing, you get stuck immediately. Don't know if that's true, but... Over here, there's drawers. Didn't think I did that. They're all empty. How unusual. Not to mention disappointing. Oh, so that's it. <laughs> Alright. I didn't miss anything. But at least I checked that out. Um, so, casebook, what were we doing? Find out more about Guy and Celine. Oh, right, I have to speak to Jean Dupre. Why don't we do that? Go to his... Um, bunkhouse, whatever he has. Hunting cabin. Hello? Is anyone here? Strange of Dupre to leave the door unlocked. Maybe it means he'll be returning soon. Or something happened to him. So he's gone. So let's check out his satchels, cabin. boxes, and other assorted boring things for hunting. Boring things. Cabinet. Let's see if Jean has anything interesting in here. Yes, let's. Not very much, except a letter. Could be interesting. Dear Jean, thank you so much for your help. To think that Mother would try and have me withdraw from my studies is just unbelievable. Don't worry, I won't tell her you made the university change their minds. One attempt to ruin a life is quite enough, Juliet. Seems like a motive to me. Guns. One of the guns is missing. Jean must be out using it currently. Probably. Oops. Oh. Who uh -oh. the hell are you? What are you doing in my cabin? Jean Dupre, I presume? Yes, that's right. Who are you? Miles Fordham, private investigator. I'm looking into the attempted murder of your wife. Oh, yes. Yes, of course. Put down the gun, please. Forgive my rudeness, but you startled me. <laughs> Perfectly understandable, Mr. Dupre. Is it, though? This is a man whose bark is most definitely worse than his bite. Now I can't look around anymore. Maybe I should have done that last. Because <laughs> I want to look at everything, but... Or maybe there's nothing much left. Not a very dignified end for our friend, Mr. Bear. Ooh, is he real? Let's speak to him. Can we talk, Mr. Dupre? I suppose so. Yes. Um, what do I want to know? The letter, but I don't know if that's confrontational. It might be. Let's start here. What can you tell me about Madame Dupre? Oh, my dear wife. The past few days have been just awful for all of us. Yes, I can imagine. <laughs> How long have you been married? For seven wonderful years. Laura and I are just as much in love now as we were on the day we married. Lord, does he actually it. expect anyone to believe that nonsense? <laughs> I agree with that. You'll pardon me for being so frank, Mr. Dupre, but why are you out hunting and not at your wife's side? Excuse me? Who are you to lecture me on my marriage? A fellow married man, that's who. Your wife has just suffered a very traumatic ordeal. Shouldn't you be at home caring for her? Yeah, but you should. With all the confusion at the house, with the police investigating and her being attended to by her doctor, I just needed to get away for a bit. Surely you can understand, Mr. Fordham. I do not. There's something off about this guy, Miles. He's definitely hiding something. And for once, I don't think it's from his wife. <laughs> for once. And also, he's a hunter and he has guns. And didn't a couple of people disappear? So he is very suspicious. Death. Do you know anything about the circumstances surrounding Madame Dupre's death? Horrible. Simply horrible. Do you have any idea why Mr. Martin might have attempted to kill her? Mr. Martin? 
You mean the boys they arrested? Yeah, we do. Andrew said it's because Martin and his mother are witches who prey on the well-to-do. You only need to take one look at him to see his trouble. It's a shame they put him away so quickly. Why? I'd have liked to teach uh. him a lesson or two, believe you me. Yeah, I believe right. you. A lesson on how to cower in the corner, most likely. <laughs> Uh, do I want to know about him? Why I suppose not? it goes without saying that you enjoy hunting, Mr. Dupre? Yes, I do. I consider myself something of an outdoorsman, you see. It's nice to be able to go out and get some fresh air after being sat at the bank all day. What about your home life? Truth be told, I'm not at home as often as I'd like to be. I've been trying to make more time, but something usually comes up. Business is business, after all. Yeah, but what business are we talking about here exactly? I do wonder that too. Stepchildren. What can you tell me about your stepchildren? Ah, uh, Andrew and Juliet? I see a bright future ahead for both of them. What's your relationship with them like? It's fine. Why do you ask? So it's not. I got the distinct impression from both of them that they hardly ever see you. Well, yes. I suppose that is true. We don't spend much time together. But they're both so busy with school. I don't want to get in their way. Not to mention my job keeps me away from home for considerable periods of time. Isn't that convenient? Excuses, excuses. I get the feeling Mr. Dupre avoids his family on purpose. But why? Yeah, indeed, because he says they're busy with school and that Andrew is just chilling on the couch doing nothing. <laughs> do you fear your wife, Mr. Dupre? Do I? What? So you do. The question's quite simple. Are you afraid of Madame Dupre? Why in the easy would you think that? So yes. I'm a little me were. I found this bloody whip. You're clearly afraid of your own shadow. <laughs> oh, what what do I need to choose? I don't know. Not this one, I think. I think this will end badly. I don't want to give her away because she asked me not to, and I think she might get in trouble. What about this? Come on, Mr. Dupre, you're clearly afraid of your own shadow. What? Oops. Don't deny it, Sean. You're as yellow as a chum harlot's teeth. Mr. Falcon, I agree to answer your questions, not to be insulted. I think it's best if you leave. Uh-oh. Well, so much for this line of inquiry. That was a mistake. See? I made a mistake. Now I get stuck. I can't ask him anything. Mr. Dupre, out, Mr. Fordham. Oh. Oh, no. So maybe I should have chosen the whip. I had a nasty whip. run -in with an alligator when I was a child. One less in the world doesn't really bother me, to be honest. So does that mean that I can't find out certain things Some anymore? Some high society type in the middle of a hunt. I don't understand why anyone would get a thrill out of murdering innocent creatures. I agree. Hmm. Bottles? Seems Mr. Dupre is a Bowlingworth man. Maybe he's not so bad after all. Alright. So I guess that maybe I'm not able to solve it anymore. Oops, I hope not. He's gone. Hmm. Alright. So, so far, I've made the right choices because I haven't had this happen before. What now? Should I ask the police detective? Please help me, I made a mistake. She probably won't. Can we talk? Go on, I'm listening. No, only about herself. How are things going with you? Work is hectic as usual, and I'm spending my day off in here. But considering my home life is still a shambles, Maybe this is the best place to be. I'm truly sorry about that. Don't be ridiculous. If it hadn't been for you, I'd still be chained to that philandering bastard. It hasn't been easy, but I'm much better off this way. Trust me. Anyway, work gives me something to focus on. I'm sure you can relate to that. Yes, and I'm grateful to you for getting me these case leads. I know you're taking a risk to do it. It's the least I can do. How about you? How's Adelaide? She's fine. Although things between us could be improved, if I'm being honest. The less said about it right now, the better, I think. I'm sorry to hear that. You can talk to me about it if you need to, although I'm probably not the best person to ask for relationship advice. That's it, I think. Then you'd better get back to it. I'm sorry I asked. <laughs> this was kind of a boring conversation. I mean, I feel sorry for her and all, but why does this stuff matter? Um, so... I made a mistake. I can't. I can't talk to Juliet. Maybe about a, the leather I found. Would that work? Hello again, Miss Montgomery. Mind answering a few more questions? Hello, Mr. Fordham. 
Not at all. Until I say the wrong thing. Did your mother try to get you withdrawn from the university? As a matter of fact, she did. Just another one of the many ways she tried interfering with my life. What happened, exactly? Mother wrote the university requesting that I be withdrawn. I found out about it when the enrollment office contacted me. I couldn't believe it at first. I thought it was some sort of mistake, but then they showed me the letter. I take it you were upset. More than upset, Mr. Fordham. I was furious. I was trying to make a real life for myself. One that wasn't about dresses or debutante balls or fending off suitors. I'd been given the chance to make something of myself, and Mother was ready to bring it all crashing down, just because she didn't agree with it. But in the end, you're still here. Yes. Jean stepped in and fixed everything. He didn't have to do it, but it was very good of him. I'm afraid that was the beginning of the end of my relationship with Mother. We never really managed to fix things after that. So I did find this out. Cool. No more questions for now. Then if you don't mind, I have work to do. All right, so I don't know if the chance Fordham, afraid. are you thinking what I'm thinking? Wait, <laughs> what am I saying? Of course you are. Madame Dupre has been interfering with Juliet's studies and disapproved of her relationship with Martin. Hence, they're falling out. It's a motive. Plus, the information in Juliet's notes about ethericity, putting animals into a death-like trance, seems awfully suspicious. It's enough to establish both means and motive. That's plenty to consider her a suspect. I agree. And I've been saying it all along, too. Um, casebook. So, now that... Speak to Jean Dupre. Yeah, but I can't do that anymore because he's mad at me. <laughs> Will they just be standing here until the end of the case? Return to Upton and accuse Juliet. Oh! Alright, but I still need to find out more about Guy and Celine. How will I do that? Is that what Sean has to tell me, maybe? And investigate the tomb. Hmm. Madame Dupre tried to have Juliet withdrawn from the university because she did not approve of her studies. When Juliet found out she was furious, this caused an ir irreparable rift between mother and daughter. Bloodstained whip found hidden behind a painting in Madame Dupre's bedroom, presumably used to beat her servants. Yeah, well, read all this, but what do I need these tweezers for? I don't know. Oh, she's my suspect now! A strange daughter. Hates her mother for disapproving of her relationship and trying to have her removed from university. Researching atheristy and its ability to make living creatures appear dead. Oh, so maybe I can have more than one suspect. Is that it? So what I can do now is accuse her. And that might be wrong. Or I can continue my investigation, but I have a dead end. <laughs> Whoops. Um, I don't really know. Because also that Andrew is doing a b bunch of stuff that's suspicious. And what do I need these tweezers for? Why don't we go back to the tomb? I must miss something there. But honestly, I do think that she did it. That guy's still gone. <laughs> No, I don't see anything, so I don't know what to do with this. Um, what I could do though is reload and maybe see if I can do something else with that Sean, which is kind of cheating. <laughs> but I want to try and see what happens. Maybe say something else this time. See Hello? What happens. Is anyone here? Strange of Dupre to leave the door unlocked. Maybe it means he'll be returning soon. Yeah, it does. We know that already. So here's the letter. Let's see if Jean has anything. Not Let's find that again, because we need that. Satchels, boxes, and other assorted boring things for hunting. Let's look I at the guns. I had a nasty run-in with an alligator when I was a child. One less in the world <laughs> doesn't really bother me, to be honest. An absolute bore. <laughs> Are these even native to New Britannia? I don't know. It seems Mr. Dupre is a Bollingworth man. Maybe he's not so bad after all. Some high society type in the middle of a hunt. I don't understand why anyone would get a thrill out of murdering innocent creatures. 
You're not always innocent, though. If they're coming at you. Not a very dignified end for our friend, Mr. B. Alright, so... You really have to wonder about someone who chooses to surround themselves with dead things. It doesn't really matter that I chose the guns immediately. Well, the guns is missed. So, he's coming now? Threatening me Who the hell are you? What are you doing in my cabin? Jean Dupre? Yeah, I'm Miles. I'm gonna skip this, because we've already seen this. Funky mouth. Perfectly. Is it so hang up your gun and speak to me. Can we talk? I said... Let's see, where did I go wrong? Oh, right, let's start with this because I do need to do know this. Tell me what you know about Guy Dumas and Celine. I'm sure I have no idea what you're talking about. They were former servants of yours. Do you not remember them? Oh, I remember them. I just have nothing to say about them. I've met some bad liars in my day, but this guy really takes the cake. We'll get him, somehow. We did it last time. Letter. Do you know anything about Madame Dupre? Ah, yes. I did. I wrote. That's very good. Yes. Yet, he seems perfectly willing to employ servants at his home. Well, I suppose we're all hypocrites in one way or another. Wait, I don't think I asked this last time. <laughs> Oops, so I skipped over it. I'm sorry. What but can you tell I me did. about Madame? Oh, my dear wife. Yes. How long? Have... For Lord, does he act? You'll pardon me. Excuse A fellow man. Your wife. But we saw the come. I just. There's. Right, I did ask this too. Do you know anything? Or. Do you... Me, Andrew. You only. I did. Yeah, right. Himself? I suppose it goes without saying that you enjoy hunting. Yes, I do. I consider myself something of an outdoorsman, you see. It's nice to be able to go out and get some fresh air after being sat at the bank all day. Yeah, we noticed that. What about your day. home life? Truth be told, I I've been trying to make more time, but something usually comes up. Business is business, after all. Yeah, but what business are we talking about here exactly? Stepchildren. What can you tell me about your stepchildren? Ah, uh, Andrew and Juliet? What's your relation? It's... F I got the... Well, but not to mention... Excuses, excuse... Yeah, so we checked that and this is why we went Do wrong. you fear your wife, Mr. Dupre? Do I... What? The question's quite simple. Are you afraid of Madame Dupre? Why in the easy would you think that? Right, so this is wrong. I don't think that I should read out Emily. What about this? I'd be afraid of someone who kept a bloody whip in my bedroom. Care to explain that? I... I, I, you don't know her like I do. No one so does. this is the right answer. Well, no one aside from the servants, I suppose. She's cruel, Mr. Fallon. Crueler than anyone or anything I've ever seen. Finally, some honesty. Tell me more about Madame Dupre's cruelty. She treats the servants like animals, Mr. Fallon. She would say the most vile, awful things to them. Things I would expect to hear on the Gascon docks. Not from the lips of a grand dame. And the beatings. Oh, God. The screams I would hear from somewhere in the house. Somewhere? I never dared find out where. So there is a secret room. Nobody else ever heard the screaming? No. She was cunning. She would do it when no one else was around. Once she knew I had heard, she threatened me. Told me she would... Yes? She threatened to expose my secret, Mr. Fordham. Is it that you gave? And what secret is that? Our marriage is one of convenience. It's all for show. Laura has herself a well-to-do husband, and I am a normal man in the eyes of society. I see. I suppose that would explain a few things. <laughs> a few well, things. now, how is that not <laughs> obvious to you? The soporific is really having a bad effect on you. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry, Mr. Dupre. Your secret's safe with me. Thank you, Mr. Fordham. I kind of guessed it, though. All right. Will you now tell me the truth about them? Tell me what you know about Guy Dumas and Celine. <sighs> Celine had uh, an accident. I knew it. What kind of accident? Laura thought Celine had been stealing her silverware. She got a bit carried away with a beating and... Dupre killed Celine? Yes, okay. she did. In order to keep it quiet, she had Celine placed in our family too. Oh, that's what I need to do I there. What about Guy? I don't know. I never saw him again after that. Well, this case has certainly taken a turn for the sinister. That I'll be did. going now. Au revoir, Mr. Vaudan. So I'm glad I reloaded because now we have another motive or path, however you want to call it. 
for that guy. He may be behind it. Um, casebook. This is the letter. So we, can, what we can do now, we can for sure go to Juliet and do what we just did. So we'll have her as a suspect as well. And what about this? According to Jean, Lara Dupre was extremely cruel to her servants, beating them and saying awful things to them. He's deathly afraid of her and stays quiet lest she expose the fact that their marriage is one of convenience. Um, is that all that updated? I think it is. So let's first do Juliet and then go to the tomb to find... What was her name? I forgot. Celine? Let's do the same Hello thing Hello again, Miss Montgomery. Did your mom... I've been... So I skipped that very quickly. No more <laughs> because we just did it. So. Fordham, are you... Um, let me see. So now we have her as a suspect. Yes, we do. And let's go to the tomb. I hope I'm not going too fast, but we already did this, so I don't want to do things twice. Well, I mean, I have to do them twice because I messed up, but you know what I mean. Alright, and I could skip this too. Do I need to look at all the crypts then? I don't know. Do Dale Chester. He's just gonna read Sarah them. Jane Des Wait a minute. This is Celine, the maid. Oh, Celine. Taken too soon. Yeah, it is. Somehow a piece of paper got wedged into the side of the vault. Let's open it up, why don't we? Pull on or use tweezers. Carefully now. Let's see if that works. I need to do it. Got it. Nice work, Fordham. Now to see what this is. She will pay for what she did Leaving to you, notes my for love. the dead. How very touching. I wonder if anyone has left me one at my grave. Quiet, Bill. Bill I need to out? think. <laughs> we know this note is likely from Guy. Yeah. Now we just need to figure out where to find him. Is there anything on the other side of that piece of paper? Bill, you're a genius. I wouldn't give me all the credit just yet. Let's see. A receipt for an extended stay at the Stun Arms. Does that sound familiar at all? Hmm. Vaguely. But I can't recall anything off the top of my head. Looks like we'll have to do a bit more searching. Oh, maybe my detective friend knows. Document. Alright. Is that what I need to do at the tomb? Is it gone now? Let me see. Yeah, it is. So return to Upton and Gushulet. I could do that. Find out what and where the Stun Arms is. Yeah, but how? Mm, so are my tweezers? No, I still have them. All right. Let me think. I could ask her, maybe. Or... I don't know what else. Or maybe... Do I have books in my bookcase at home? Your book collection is always a Your book co It's been sold. I guess not. What about the newspaper? I don't see anything. If there isn't a pair of scissors or a hairbrush in Adelaide... No. Maybe my detective friend then. Oops. <laughs> Wrong one. I always go there because she looks like her, the picture. But she's here. Hurry up. I don't want to accuse no, you yet, so, so I hope it's not the only thing I can do. Wrap up review. I wanted to go over the. Okay. Guys, note. I found this note in the Chesterton tomb. I think it was left by the person who attacked Madame Dupre. Nice work. Sounds like you're about ready to wrap things up. I will be as soon as I find him. Take a look at the other side of it. Part of a receipt for a hotel? Yes, but the name is only partially visible at the bottom. Stun Arms. Hmm. Do you know it? The only hotel that comes to mind is the Boston Arms in Chumley. Of course! I knew the name sounded familiar. Ah, the stories I could tell you about that place. Not right now. <laughs> You're helpful as always, Upton. Thank you. Good luck, Fordham. I hope you find your suspect. All right. That's enough about the case for now. Okay. Uh, bye. That's it, I think. Then you'd better get back. 
Because I already asked about itself and it was kind of boring. <laughs> um, so let's speak the guy. So in my previous uh, play, I, I wouldn't have gotten this at all. He wouldn't even have been a suspect. Who is it? Because I said one thing wrong. Gentle, forceful, discreet. Well, not forceful. Oh, I could make another mistake. Discreet? I don't know. Mr. Dumas, listen to me. I don't want to make this into more of an issue than it should be. No, that's But I wrong. believe it's in your best interest to let me in so I can speak with you. Just a moment. I'm Miles Fordham, a private investigator. It's extremely important I speak with you, Mr. Dumas. What do you want? Just to talk. May I come in? Yes, I suppose so. I found your note in St. Dennis Cemetery. Care to explain what it means? How, how did you... I'm a private investigator, Mr. Dumas. That's what I do. Now we can either do this the easy way or the hard way. It's up to you. I left that note for Celine. I didn't think anyone would ever find it. I did, though. So it was you who attacked Madame Dupre? Yes. Yes, it was me. I confess. Really? <laughs> I can't remember the last time a suspect actually confessed. If only they were all like this. But please, <laughs> Mr. Fordham, you have to understand. The woman is evil. If only you knew what she did. Please, don't arrest me, Mr. Fordham. You have to know the truth about Madame Dupre. Tell me. Relax, Mr. Dumas. I'm not going to arrest you just yet. I'm perfectly willing to hear your side of the story. Me too. Now let's take this nice and slow. All right. Um, what about Celine? Tell me about Celine. Oh, my dear Celine. She was the most beautiful thing I ever saw. We were going to get married, you know. Then that devil killed her. She, she beat her to death in front of me. I was powerless to do anything. Please, Mr. Fordham, I don't want to remember. Let us speak of something else. About this? What can you tell me about Madame Dupre? She seemed like a nice woman at first. But after working for her, I came to know how awful she truly was. When no one was around, she would beat me and some of the other servants for fun, say the most cruel things, call us horrible names. Why didn't you just leave? She threatened us, told us she would make it impossible for us to get work anywhere else. It's already difficult enough getting a job that doesn't force you to operate those awful machines. To be blacklisted by Madame Dupre would have been the final nail in the coffin. Uh, this? So why did you attack Madame Dupre in the way you did? I knew that if I went to her home and killed her, I would be caught and thrown in jail. I needed to find a way to do it quietly and not make anyone suspicious. Also, I wanted her to suffer for what she did to my Celine. I had read about toxic plants in Juliet's school books, and I knew a bit about them oh, from that's working right. as a gardener. So I decided to poison Dupre and make her appear dead so she could be buried alive and suffer the same way she made us when she would lock us away in her secret room. Secret room? I want to know that, Did yeah. Did you say secret room? Yes, Mr. Fordham. It was no bigger than a coffin. She would place us inside if she was especially mad at us, with no food or water, sometimes for days at a time. We couldn't scream because she would stuff our mouths. She would also plug our ears and cover our faces. How often did she put you in there? Only a few times, but that was more than enough. I'd rather not think about it. So you have no idea where it is? None. I only remember Madame Dupre would say the same thing any time she was about to put someone in there. It's behind the piano. A perfect servant must behave. I've told you everything, Mr. Fordham. Are you still going to arrest me? Did you? I haven't quite decided yet, Mr. Dumas. If I can find this secret room, it would be enough to charge Madame Dupre with a crime. However, if you haven't been telling me the truth... I have been, Mr. Fordham. I swear it. I'll even make you a deal. If you promise me you'll try to find the secret room, I won't leave this hotel. All right, Duma, it's a deal. Well, at least now we can go straight to Upton and have him taken <laughs> in. Unless you really do believe him about the secret I room. I do. And I want to find it. Does, it. does the game tell me that I have a choice? Albert Martin. Do you know Albert Martin? No. Who is that? He's Juliet's lover. Falsely accused of the crime you committed. I, I had no idea. Are you going to let an innocent man die because of what you did? No. No, of course not. I, I suppose things got out of hand. It was not that. my intention for someone else to take the blame for my actions. Himself? How did you come to be employed by Madame Dupre? I used to work in an iron factory in Chomley. 
but a few years ago, they brought in some steam machines to help production. One of the machines had a problem, and my friend Connor and I were assigned to fix it. We had no idea what we were doing, but we wanted to keep our jobs. I don't know what happened, but the next thing I knew, Connor was dead, and I was badly hurt. I swore never to go near one of those machines again. After I got better, I spent a few months looking for work, but it was impossible to find any jobs that didn't involve steam tech. Then I found out about Madame Dupre. Working at her home seemed like an improvement. I had a decent bed to sleep in. The work was not difficult, and I even made friends with her daughter. But Madame Dupre soon showed her true nature. That's all for right now, but I'll be back. Yes, Mr. Fordham. I'll be here. You better. All right, can I look around? If there's one thing I can't stand, it's crooked painting. <laughs> yeah, I agree with that. <laughs> it appears someone is due for seven years of bad... A wash basin? Where did this place get so fancy? Fancy. What seems seems to be what passes for a dresser around here. Either that or Dumas is secretly a pirate. All right, so not that interesting, all of it. No. So let's go find that secret room if we can. Um, in that manner. So, if you don't ask the right question to Jean, or what's his name? Ask Jean the right question. You can't find the real killer anymore. Does Andrew know? As amusing as it is to chat with this oddball, oddball. I think we've exhausted his usefulness at the moment. Alright. Let's look at the books, because you said... That sentence is maybe important, that the servants should behave or something? I don't remember it. There are way more important things to concern ourselves with. Oh, so that's wrong, but what then? Mm, let me see. Return to the accused guy, return to accuse Juliet. Well, I don't want to accuse Juliet anymore because she's innocent. I have him, former servant of Madame Dupre, confessed to attacking her in retaliation for the murder of his lover Celine. So I have nothing. It must be behind the piano, I really do think that it is. But how do I unlock that? For him to know. <laughs> oh, wrong room. I still need to open this chest by the way. Locked. Hmm. Or maybe ask Amelie, could be. You can do something with this. Now what? <laughs> What's this? I changed the music. That's so weird. Let's leave it on, why not? It's fun. The science of pharmaco- No. Hmm. Let's see if Amelie knows. Amelie? Yes? What is it? We mustn't be seen talking. I can't speak with her. Oh, just a whip. I found this upstairs in Madame Dupre's bedroom. Do you recognize it? I think she does. Oh, please take that away, Mr. Fordham. Why would you show it to me? I really don't know. I'm <laughs> sorry, I didn't think it would upset you. Ah, uh, Miles. Maybe someday you'll learn how to read basic human emotion. <laughs> Thank you, Amelie. I appreciate your time. You're welcome. Now please, let me get back to work. I wanted to know about the secret room, but I don't... I, they didn't even write down that sentence, did they? Hmm... Guys, notes... Letter, letter, letter... Cruelty... How to find that room? I really don't know. What was the sentence again? Does that maybe not matter at all? Could be. Maybe it doesn't. Would the parrot know? 
Oh, yes. A perfect servant must behave. And now you'll taste an early grave. <laughs> Me so far, Ray. <laughs> In the middle, see? A sofa. So long. <laughs> That's what I needed him for. Where's the sofa? Is it here? And who's Ray, by the way? Is this a sofa? I think so. There's nothing here. That beast better not have misled us, or he'll be roasting on a spit for sure. <laughs> There's nothing here. What if I turn this on? No? There's nothing here. That beast. Why would anyone need so- Perhaps it's to mask the odor. Hmm. Why would anyone- Perhaps- hmm. Go Is it maybe a different sofa? What about in this room? There's also a sofa, isn't there? This sofa? Nothing. Damn that bird! What the hell was he babbling about? Oh, dear God. Mm, is that another sofa? In Juliet's room? No, there isn't. Also, that would not make sense. And who's Ray? <laughs> Uh, again, let's ask him again. A per and now you'll taste an early grave. <laughs> Me so far, Ray. <laughs> In the middle, see? So long. <laughs> Me so far. As amusing as it. Can't use this sofa. Ray. Is this what she means? Ray. The D. Let's try this. Or oh, he, I don't know, is it a girl or a boy, the Barrett? <laughs> Press D? Alright, I looked it up, so he doesn't mean so far, he means me so far, right? <laughs> this is kinda. Um. So, is it like this? Yes. That seems to have done something. There it is. Whoops. Dear God. This does not look good. He's dead. It's the should inform Dr. Fellows about this right away. It seems Guy was telling the truth after all. Yes, it would probably be a good idea to let him know of this development. Oh, so you're doing this... The house is gone! Hmm, alright. Guy? Y yes I... I found the secret room you told me about. You see? I wasn't lying. You were not. No, you certainly weren't. There was someone inside. A man. No. Who? I'm not sure, but I can only assume it was one of Madame Dupre's servants. Was he all right? I'm afraid no. not. He was dead. Dr. Fellows confirmed it was due to asphyxiation. Madame Dupre must have put him in there before I drugged her. I think so. And then, with everything that's happened, she didn't let him out in time. Oh my god. It's my fault he's dead. If only I'd known. The circumstances are quite unfortunate, Mr. Dumas. However, this has shed a new light on Madame Dupre and her cruel practices. I can't say for certain that you were justified in your actions, but... I am a bit reluctant to say you were completely at fault. But the bottom fact is that Mr. Martin has been falsely accused of this crime. True that. If I were to let you go, he would be punished in your place. Unless... Yes? I'm going to need you to write me a letter, Mr. Dumas. Of course, Mr. Fordham. Anything to take care of this mess. All right, what now? Good. Hopefully now this whole grim affair can be brought to an end. What did you do? That's Tell all for me. right now, but I'll be back. Yes, Mr. Fordham. I'll be here. Why will you be back? What letter? Explain something to me. What did you do? Confession. Some mind and body here by confessed to the damned murder of Madame Le 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 Dupree. Is that what he let him write? Return to Upton. Alright, so let's go back to her. 
and still can choose to accuse Juliet also, which would be kind of mean, but it's an option. Can we talk? Go on, I'm listening. Right, so wrap up the case. I think I'm ready to wrap this case up. Okay, who's your prime suspect? So I can acquit, condemn, unsolvable. What to do? I mean, he kind of said that he would. But murder is murder. I don't know. I don't know what to choose. What if I say this and then that Martin guy will get hanged, won't he? It was Guy Dumas, a former servant at Dupre Manor. He used toxic plants to drug Madame Dupre so she appeared dead, which he learned about from her daughter's school books. What was his motive? That's the thing. I've learned that Madame Dupre is extremely cruel to her servants. She regularly beats them, and even has a secret room no bigger than a coffin where she places them as punishment. I discovered this secret room and found a dead servant inside. He had died from asphyxiation. My God. A few months ago, Madame Dupre beat Guy's lover Celine to death. He wanted revenge and intended to make Madame Dupre suffer the trauma of being interred alive. I see. Constance, I don't think Dumas should be arrested for his crime. He doesn't deserve it. Madame Dupre, however. Yes, I see what you're saying, and I agree, but what about Mr. Martin? I got a signed confession from Mr. Dumas. You can see the handwriting matches this note I found in the cemetery. That should be enough to release Mr. Martin, as well as giving Guy a head start in his escape from the city. It's gonna be tricky getting the department to look into this. But with the proof you've gathered, it should work. Yeah, this is what I wanted Excellent to do. Excellent investigating, Fordham. I knew you still had it in you. And of course, I'll dip into the department's Good Samaritan Fund to get you proper compensation for your work. I get money? For now, go home to your wife. I'm sure I'll have something else for you to look into fairly soon. Well, I almost messed up, <laughs> so... Good evening. I'm looking for Madame Laura Dupre. This is Madame Dupre. I am her personal physician, Dr. Fellows. May we help you, officer? You're being arrested. I'm afraid I must place Madame Dupre under arrest. What? On what charge? Matter. Several, actually. Manslaughter, domestic violence, murder in the second degree. Shall I go on, or can we continue this at the police station? Yeah, why is he so You protective? won't have to worry about Madame Dupre anymore. She'll be in jail for a very long time. And Mr. Martin has been released with a full pardon as well. Thank you, Mr. Fordham. I appreciate your help and your trust. Think nothing of it, but you'll need to leave town as soon as you can. Have you made plans? I was thinking of heading south. New Britannia is too cold and dark. I want to find some place more like my home. Well, I wish you the best of luck, Mr. Dumas. Yeah, you better run. And we're home again. Addie, I'm home. She's gone. Addie? She must still be out at her hairdressing appointment. I'm glad we're alone because I wanted to talk to you about something. Oh, no. Yes, Bill, I know. I told you I'm doing my best to try and find the flower shop burglar. No, for once, this isn't about him. This is about you. Uh, why do I get exciting music? What are you on about, Bill? Yeah, let's say this. Me? What are you on about? You can play dumb and deflect all you like with everyone else around you, but it won't work with me. I know exactly what you are thinking, and you know exactly what I'm going to say. Well, not this, because you just said that. You want to talk about how this case went? I honestly don't know. This? You want to talk about how we did on this case? Yes, that's exactly right. Have you already forgotten the old days, Miles? Before I died, we were solving cases like nobody's business. You were one of the best detectives on the force. But ever since you started taking that soporific, your mind hasn't been as sharp as before. If you're serious about taking on more complex cases, you need to listen to Adelaide and stop taking it. It's already had a negative effect on your performance. What are you talking about? We were able to discover the truth about Madame Dupre. Almost we're yes, not. Yes, but if you were working at your full abilities, you'd have come to that conclusion much sooner. I would not. <laughs> if I stop taking it, you won't let me sleep through the night. Nothing will change. Well, things would change if you found you know who. I could just stop I thought dunking. you said we weren't going to talk about that right now. Yeah, well, I say a lot of things. Yeah, way too much. statement if ever there was one. <laughs> Can't you just keep quiet without me having to take something? Exactly. Afraid not, old friend. That's just not who I am or how this works. If you keep me up all night, I'll go crazy. Things have been hard enough as it is. And if, God forbid, Adelaide were ever to find out about... There she is. Hello, Miles. 
Is there someone else here? I thought I heard you talking just now. Fantastic. The jig is up. And here I thought we were doing so well, too. Thinking aloud, talking to myself, calling out to see if you were home. Will she believe this? Oh, yes. I was just calling out to see if you were home yet. Well, I am now. How was your appointment? Mrs. Lefebvre was her usual bossy and overly picky self, but she gave me a very generous tip. That's good. So I stopped by the shop on the way home and bought a new deck of cards. Excellent. Shall we have a few rounds of ecarte? I believe you demanded a rematch last time we played. What is that? Yes, that would be nice. Well, you certainly managed to dodge that bullet. Yes, I only Martin. wish I could say the same. Literally. So that's case one wrapped up. Thank you for watching. Curious what happens next? Subscribe to my page so you don't miss anything.